On this episode of Decently Indecent, I sat down with my friend Eli, one of the hosts of the Unsubscribe podcast, a show that I adore. We chatted about life, war, fatherhood, content creation, mindset, and grabbing life by the dick. I really appreciated and enjoyed our conversation together, and I hope you guys find some value in it as well. Thanks so much for tuning in. I've been having a bit of an identity crisis because I want to be, you know, as I'm a little bit newer to being on this side of the podcast, where you're like the guy who's in charge of it, you know, leading it and, and, and inviting people on. I, I want to be the guy that, you know, does the deep research and asks incredible leading questions and extracts profound wisdom from his guest that leads everyone to the promised land. But I also want to just laugh about shit and cum jokes most of the time. It's a nice so balance. It's a bit of an emotional <laughs> roller coaster for me. Just, yeah, you got to find the balance somewhere, right? Okay. I feel like you've done a good job with that. On unsub, just like you have your serious moments. There's the cum jokes, you know, it's a little bit of everything. Just a nice wave. You're like, oh, PTSD story, war. Oh, that's that's deep. Cum, fart. <laughs> and you're back up on the way. <laughs> bring it back, bring it back down the roller coaster with a cum joke, and then uh, it all starts to flow. Peaks and valleys, my friend. Yes, exactly. So for those listening now, this will be obviously available audio as well. Uh, I'm joined here by uh, Eli Double Tap, who is uh, a friend of mine. He also is um, the uh, one of the main hosts of the Unsubscribe podcast. I, I think at this point, the only host that has been consistent throughout the entirety of the show since what was it 2020 it started 21 when was it when you guys kicked off 2021 uh i want to say the end of it is when it kicked 21. off and then uh yes it has been the i the just we gotta keep it going no matter what trials and tribulations happen this podcast is staying alive <laughs> That's, I, that's, I, I mean, that speaks, I think, to your work ethic. I mean, some people, I think casual viewers, listeners probably don't, you know, there's the meme that like everyone has a podcast and ha ha ha, but uh, people don't understand the amount of work and time it takes to do something like that consistently over the course of weeks, months, years, a uh, lot of work. And I, you know, from what I've known just in getting to know you a little bit, like you're definitely you've been the main catalyst behind the scenes i think from the business side of things uh helping to propel that along so i just want to say first of all congratulations on the success the show's having uh i'm a huge fan obviously i i like to brag a little bit because i was on one of the earlier episodes you know before before you guys got too big for your britches and uh, <laughs> we love we love we on we the love second before. episode and plan to go back oh you do you were <laughs> definitely having you again. this year or, excuse me later this this month later this month yeah i think by the time this comes out it'll be close it'll it'll be out before uh the end of this month so hopefully about a week and a half after this we'll i'll get to sit down in the same room with you as i go down for another range day which i'm excited Ooh, about so excited to have you again and it's like always love my time down in oh, texas just a blast and then being able to have you come on and Every time you're one of my favorite guests, just because how well spoken you're, you're fucking hilarious. And also, you have your attention to detail in oh, finding geez. that craft, which is so rare to see. Every time I boot up, some, there's a there's a handful of you when I watch your content. I'm like, Leon gets lighting and camera work, and I appreciate that. That's my tism's happy. He's happy. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, but it, it's always a pleasure to have you. you I'll, I'll get a text randomly from Eli, at like. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate that. I always, I always enjoy the text. I'll get it like 1 a.m. and you'll be like, dude, really nice job. I notice you changed that little, like, you'll notice I'll, I changed like one part of the set or the lighting. And I'm like, that's that Eli attention to detail. <laughs> and we share that similar passion in the kind of the production side of things. Like, I don't know what, like, I have no experience. I had no experience before starting on YouTube. I didn't know how to even operate a point and shoot camera. And I've found myself just so interested in the idea of setting up scenes and making things look nice. And I spend time researching it and watching and trying to figure out how to use new things, learning about new equipment and that stuff really gets my jollies. I don't know. And it, and it does to you too. And obviously you've been able to employ that in what you do and I'm being able to do it in what I do. So Look at us doing something we love. Oh, crazy <laughs> concept. Crazy concept. And now you're going into the podcast world, which yeah. is, it sounds so easy. It's, and you're going with guests. 
And it's the hardest thing. The mm -hmm. idea of a podcast, you're like, yes. I just get to talk for an hour, two hours with my buddies. This is going to be the easiest money ever. Right. Well, sure. you and a billion other white people uh, <laughs> are also doing the same thing. <laughs> and then on top of that, it is yep. finding guests is not as easy as people, especially when like we do it. You know how we do it all. We don't do remote. We have guests there and yes. that is such a bitch 100%. even doing guests like you are because today i was the asshole i'm late <laughs> i was like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hurried I'm, then i'm like oh my camera's not hooked up <laughs> i Gosh, wasn't gonna say it. anything live but... <laughs> oh i'm calling myself out <laughs> well you're doing me you're doing me the favor so i could never say anything but dude it, it was so funny I, I wanted to actually say this live on, on while we were recording because i had, i had texted you earlier and i was like uh i was like hey um I was like, what? Because we had planned for tonight. And I was like, hey, what? This was around like five o'clock my time, I guess. I was like, what time's good for you tonight? Seven or eight, your time, or I'm around later too, whatever works. And you just go, I got you. <laughs> I was like, okay. All right. So does does that mean seven? Or does that mean eight? Or what is it? <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm just going to wait for the second text. I'm just going to wait for the second text. <laughs> 720. Uh, no, but it was perfect because I kind of operate the same way. And, I, and, yeah. <laughs> and you know this too, like when you're in this industry, like you can make plans, but you have to be able to adapt because things are moving a mile a minute. Everyone's trying, everyone has their own thing. Everyone's trying to collaborate, do things with other people. So if you, you have to be laid back and you got to be able to kind of shift and, and go with the flow. And it just makes things so much easier when you have that type of personality, which you do, which is obviously... Um, well, I think we, one of the reasons we get along well and, and yeah, secondly, when you're, you know, I have a lot of admiration for what you do, you know, in starting this, you know, just this month, this is brand new for me. It's, I wanted to have guests on because I enjoy talking with people I admire and appreciate. And it, it is opposed to like having someone locally where it's just me and them sitting down and talking about what's going on, on the internet um, but the dynamic you have on Unsub and what you've built, having that kind of standard of like, no, we want people in the room. This is what we do. And you've kind of built the show up to the point where you fly people in, you have them stay. And, you know, you, you just, as awesome as it is to sit down and have a conversation with someone remotely, you just can't replace the magic that happens when you're in the same physical space as somebody else and kind of being able to watch that as a viewer from the beautiful black magic multi-camera angle uh, that you have set up down there in, in Texas. I'm glad you appreciate those cameras. <laughs> the file sizes are massive. <laughs> I, I, I can't even imagine, brother. I can't even imagine. I, so I did, like, in talking to you, like, I love talking about this stuff, and I know, I know there'll be a portion of my audience and yours that appreciates kind of like a little bit of the behind the scenes inside look of what it takes to run the podcast. I know you have a couple of full-time employees, obviously, and um, you have such a good community of guys down there that, you, that you'd that you make content with and obviously host the podcast with, some other that are I'm friends with and close with. And uh, what, uh, you know, what's like the what's been like the main driving force you think like from when it started in 21 to where you're at now was like there had to have been moments where you were just like fuck this right like I, why why am i doing this like whatever what's what's been kind of your main driving force in keeping it going to where it's at now and then obviously like the importance of that consistency over time is paid off in spades if you look at the from when you started to where you are now that consistency and that drive has taken you to a place where now this, I imagine, is what you would consider your full-time job. Obviously, you do a lot of other things on the side and with other people. But what was that, the main driving force? You just knew, like, did you know, like, this is this is special? I think we can really make this into something? Or was it something else? It was, I like your questions. Very good. Uh, it is this slow, it, doing <laughs> doing that, You're you have all this business that happened before that, whether it was Black Rifle, uh, my own personal businesses, the TV show, and then out of, like it was multiple businesses yeah. at this point. And then the that was our fun time. It was like, hey, let's get this going, uh, Cody and Batty, and let's roll this out. Let's figure this out together, and let's just do two episodes a week. Yep. And we cut that real quick. 
We're like, we are doing one episode a week. <laughs> that is not happening. And we started at like <laughs> cell phones and very nice mics. We're like, hey, audio first. Don't we'll we'll bring in the video portion later. And then we just started upgrading and continuing. And then yep. it was around like those episodes 50, 60. Like, okay, hey, this is going in a really cool direction. And then business yeah. happens uh, and, and you have those issues and then people get busy or things aren't aligning. And now you're and everyone's running their own business. So then it's like that. And then the world of just like right, writing right. heads as content creators. It's not easy. It's, it, content creation by itself. Sure. Fantastic idea. But there's a rule where it's like going into business with friends is a dangerous <laughs> fucking thing. <laughs> and then when you're doing artist side, of you course, have. Yeah. You you just it's artists being artists. So we we had our trials and tribulations, and I I know like that first one when uh, Cody was stepping away and he was going to focus on his stuff. YouTube was going through its whole thing with firearms, and I was like, "Fuck, okay, yeah. how yeah. the f okay?" And I restructured. I, it was that was one where I was like, "We are doing a guest every week. This is the rule. This is the standard. I do not care. We're not doing two people." that will tank the show because up to that point, we've always had three people or four people. So I was like, Hey, this has to okay. stay. It doesn't matter how much it's going to suck in order to get guests, have people rotate on. We'll spend the money in order to fly those people out. And then that, that picked up and that set the new tone for yep. every episode afterwards. That's when, and, and it was hard. It wasn't easy. That was like at the tail end of 2022, right? Yeah. 2022. And <clears throat> that entire year is yep. just writing out the business plan. It's like, okay, hey, we got these people. Hey, let's rotate in this one. Hey, let's also get these individuals in the mix because they're coming down for a range day or whatever it is. We'll fly them out. They can do the, the yep. range day the guys are putting on. Then we'll have them on as a guest so that the, everyone's helping each other out. And then it's like, hey, what space are we trying to lead into? And that was the, the, the it was that mm -hmm. space of, Hey, I want to do veteran. I want to do military. I want to do stories. I want to do history. And I only want gaming and nerd stuff five to 10%. And I am, I, I am a nerd. He just died. Yes, Heartbreaking. Yeah. Heartbreaking. <laughs> Is that, you have him on your hand? I didn't a even know. Akira Toriyama. Yeah, RIP. My boy. <laughs> yep. So it yeah. was, uh, yeah, he was uh he was a staple in that. Community. You you grew up with I mean, you grew up with Toonami. My boy knows. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not as familiar as you are, but I know the impact he had in the space and and yeah, I do think there's a lot like it's funny cuz I think everyone has, not everyone, but a lot of us, I think you, you know, Cody, uh, people down in Texas that are in your community guys our age, we all have that game. Oh, yes. Right. We grew up playing the games. We're of that age where it had a huge impact in our life in some, in some phase of our life, some element, maybe we fell off for a little while, came back to it. We all have that, but I think it just for us or just for you, where you were at and you guys, it made sense to, to not focus on that specifically because it's less relatable, I think, to the audience at large. Maybe like, of course, some people are going to love that. Those are going to be their favorite episodes. But I, I think, and just as a, as a viewer, as a, as an enjoyer of that type of content of the podcast, it's like, I want to talk about life a little bit more, like what it's like to be, you know, at this age, growing up, running businesses. Obviously there's the element, the, the veteran aspect uh, for you guys in the community you've built that, that I can't relate to, but I so admire seeing how you've built that community and brought so many people in, you know, so many people that you've had on the podcast have that background, that military background that are veterans, whether, whether active duty or, or, or veterans now. And uh, I just think that's so cool because, you know, <laughs> veterans need community. And, and you, you obviously probably know this more than, you know, more than anybody and seeing you build that and how the conversations you've had around that and kind of, this element of just like dark humor that you kind of, that I think a lot of guys adopt out of necessity probably. And then being able to have those moments, have those serious moments, but then the fun moments and it's all just kind of becomes this place where you can kind of be yourself around people that share 
the same, some of the same traumas that you have. And it creates an unbelievable environment for people to, I think, prosper once they're trying to reacclimate to civilian life, you know? Uh, and I think that that's been awesome to watch from afar. And it's fun for me just to go down. It's kind of like a, you know, I, I feel so unworthy sometimes because I'm like, these are some badass motherfuckers. And it's like <laughs> the hardest thing I've ever done is like a, a blue, a blue fucking square on a snowboard mountain, basically. Or I, actually, I, I snowboarded a black diamond once. I did a black diamond once, but that was probably the hardest. <laughs> I'll go to war before doing a black diamond. <laughs> Uh, like if you have a black diamond you just get shot at i'm doing that's the get where shot me and you at differ okay yeah. i'm like ooh, i'm gonna pull something that's where me and you differ yeah, yeah. i'm gonna break an ankle i'm gonna go down the glades trail before i step on the battlefield yeah 2023 moving into it and seeing my thought process is like man when you talk about video games if i talk about tarkov or a first person shooter once you really aren't changing the subject to like people aren't walking away from that conversation the third time like glad they touched base about that again it, you dabble right, right. and move on versus you or or fat electrician nick's a great example of every time he comes on he tells a history story yeah. and those are riveting and then watching Love it. The one that really made a difference and I'll always shout out uh, Sarnt Heine and Zex. So when they came on these are the tiniest content creators we'd had up to this point they did phenomenal yeah. on numbers and it was because sergeant h told a story a cannibal story a military cannibal story of one a thing he dealt with with his crazy Love private it. and he told it after the podcast had ended and he was like oh yeah i meant to tell you this story he started it he's five minutes into the story i was like shut the fuck up sit down i turned on all the cameras i was like go we are inserting this at the front of the podcast yeah, yeah. and sure as shit we inserted that's the producer and you you knew dude and it was so good and then we watched the numbers on that episode just boom at the beginning and then once we started talking about video games we had a 20 percent drop off and i was like it, it, content creation yeah. it's not rocket science follow the analytics and follow what's trending and then be sure. yourself but we seen that. I was like, hey, I want to lean more into this. And that's where, like, Batty, I wish him the best is where we differed. So he wanted to do D&D stuff and really go into the gaming space. I sure. just stopped caring about the gaming space altogether. Still love it. Still hardcore nerd. Yeah. Yeah. But as a subject, it is, I would, as you're saying, I would rather know about your trials, tribulations. I would love to hear your history, your funny stories. And I would like to hear how you have come, where you are now and how you got there. Because... It's not an easy road. It's not. And it's an interesting story. So that's why we were like, hey, let's actually start pivoting this. Yeah. So, and that was where the pivot happened. And, and, and I think since you made that pivot, you told me there's just been an unbelievable uptick because people's interest has been like that you're giving them more what they want. And they've been showing you that um, by coming back time and time and time again. And, you know, for me, there's there's really nothing more impactful than a story told from somebody in the first person, right? And that's that's the beautiful part about having guests on and sharing these stories. And especially in a community like the veteran community, there's going to be some fucking wild stories, obviously, that you wouldn't get from just like a couple of normal Joe Blows that like, you know, are in, working in finance or something. And the, the craziest thing they've ever done is like short Apple stock at 2000 <laughs> or something, you know, like uh, interesting, but let me, like, I was just like, that, 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 that clip you shared on fucking Twitter the other day of the veteran with a sign. Oh, the donkey. In that story of, is that his name? Right. Did, the donkey story. Did, I got his yeah, name. Yeah. Veteran right, with correct? the sign, that, Zach. Yeah. Zach. Yes. Zach. And, uh, you know, I'm I can't recreate the story, but essentially it was, uh, them on you know they were deployed and i don't know at, a, at an outpost and basically accidentally were, were surveying a couple guys and wondering what they were doing and then ended up taking turns fucking a donkey together <laughs> and they were all just, just sitting there like what the fuck are we watching right now and it's so dude, and that's like that's the shit i'm clicking on unsubscribe podcast for right there yeah it is and then you get these dude and we're so thankful for the the military veteran space we built because we get boys from from Delta, we get boys from like special forces, and I take for granted yeah. a lot of my stories. And I, I think like in my, I'm like, oh, at least in because my everything, I, war and all that. And I was like, oh, everyone that's went to war has obviously been into at least 
15 gunfights at minimum because i've done probably and i hate i hate it it's probably 60 gunfights right. easy done 60 gunfights and that's no exaggeration Ooh. and i can call in it's i can call okay. my buddies and they're like 100 percent. but when i talk to some you have complete opposite they're like bro yeah. i i ate at a chow hall and i, <laughs> I was like oh shit but then I have my buddies that are doing the high speed yeah. shit, jumping, doing halo jumps into Syria. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> that's next level. That is. And I mean, I guess it just goes just like every, every deployment is different and unique for everybody. Like, you know, I guess depending on where you are, what you're doing, some people never really see crazy action and then there's people like you who have <laughs> more that's yeah over 60 gunfights PTSD. which is unfathomable to me but that's why it's <laughs> I, wear it with pride. Yeah. I never look at what i've done with any like hey i had i i served with amazing humans uh they had my back i had theirs we lost a lot of dudes and then being back we've lost even more dudes, which is insanity yeah. to me. And then now it is that amazing space where it's like Cody, Brandon, all the dudes that come on. It is helping the veteran community. It, even Goldberg and like Tim Kenny, Special Forces UFC fighter, all around American badass. And then Bill yes. fucking Goldberg, Spear himself, the jackhammer, being able to legend, the legend and yeah. being able to text those dude two days before Christmas. We're like, Hey, do you want to do a Christmas Eve episode for the dudes out there that don't have family and everything? And it might be alone for the holidays. And both yeah. were like, fuck yeah. When and where? And they came, we had a blast. Of course we had yeah. Goldberg dressed as a Santa Claus and just, just <laughs> <laughs> like, it was an amazing experience. And they just sat and we talked for an hour and a half and wrap it up and it was a surprise special episode yeah. and the comments cool and guys. i love unsub the most is the community and it is a community that we tell dark humor we make fucked up jokes i mean if you look at the new thumbnail on with mudahar one of my favorite Sorry, thumbnails i will tell that second. story in a second but dear god that thumbnail is comedy gold and it was an accident but all those people in the comment sections are just so <laughs> thankful for everything they're like man thank you so much for doing this i was alone today i appreciate you guys i was having a rough week thank you so much i yeah. just want to say thank you it's like hell yeah this is why we're doing it because you amazing individuals out there and then we have people like you that help and come yeah. on in. it's like dude we are lucky yep. humans and <clears throat> i just try and give back that uh that love yeah I, I've always loved that about you. And I, you know, that, that was easy to read from the moment I met you. You, you know, you're somebody that, you know, appreciates, you know, your blessings in life th through all the trials and tribulations that you've had. And I think that's given you such an incredible perspective in, in, in wanting to, you know, give back to other people because you, when you feel, when you feel blessed and you come from a place of gratitude, even when you've gone through some shit, you, you can kind of look through this lens of like, man, it would be incredible if I could try and give to some other people a little bit of some of these blessings that I've been able to have because you know you've been through that, right? And that can be a really that can be an incredible driving force in what you do. And that's it's such a noble, it's such a noble reason to be doing something. And you know, it's easy to it's easy to be like, well, you're just sitting down, it's a podcast, you're talking, whatever. But we we forget sometimes we take for granted that, you know there are people out there that are just want somebody to listen to, to take their mind off of something, or they don't have a community around them. They feel isolated. They feel alone. And that is to me, one of the things I take for granted in just in the content creation space where like you can get wrapped up in the business side of it and forget that there are people out there that are genuinely appreciative uh, of what you do and are in a place where it's something that they really look forward to. And I don't, I want, I don't ever want to, that comes from a place of humility. Like I, I'm always very, I, I sometimes will kind of take the birds of it, birds eye view and be like, man, it's crazy that after all, all these years, there's still people, however many it is like that show up and listen to me talk to a fucking camera. Like I, what an unbelievable blessing that is and it's every time i really think about it when i turn the business mind off and i'm like what it's it's super humbling 
and just trying to remember that to a never take it for granted to b be grateful that you know I'm able to do something I love and people uh, can appreciate it. But yeah, I know you're in the same space, and I know just in talking with you too, just like you're always just so pumped when your boy like when your boys are doing well. You know what I mean? And it's like so excited. That's the type of energy I fucking love. Like you're not. You're not, you're like, you you don't, you can climb the ladder without stepping over people. You know what I'm saying? You can climb the ladder with your boys on your shoulders with you or whatever it is. And that's, that's the type of energy I love. And that's one of the reasons I think, you know, I always gravitate. I'm always, anytime I hear there's a range day or it's, I have a chance to come back to Texas. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking on (laughs) jetblue.com booking flights. Well, it's it's something where it's, it is giving people out there. it's, It's like being a positive mind you're not pulling the ladder up be behind you and then on t- most importantly and i i truly believe this everyone's had their different walks trials tribulations everything in life it's what you do no one no no one in our friend group is a fucking victim like and that's what i love they are motivated they're talented oh, you God. i mean you're a perfect example as you started this podcast you're like yeah i never i didn't even know how to do a camera and i didn't know shit about lighting what made you successful? I, and you can always tell. It's like you taught yourself and then you continue to refine your craft and learn and learn and learn. And I know you're, I can view, I can open up. Hey, here, let me le- see Leon's setup two years ago. Let me see today. And I will see just an amazing change. And you've never settled. And that's through your content, through your work ethic. And then you continue. I, I like praise you all the time. I was like, my boy is just branching out. Seeing what works, grabbing life by the dick, and just fucking going ham, and it's awesome. Yeah, you gotta, dude. You have to. And at the, at you the, gotta grab the dick. I grab mean, that. Like, given, given the opportunity, <laughs> and not be a victim. Don't yeah, if throw the hog over your shoulder and rock <laughs> that thing up the fucking mountain. Yeah. And it's not be a victim. Like if you shit's gonna <laughs> suck sometimes, but don't blame others if your shit's not taking off. <clears throat> A lot of people at the end of the day, it is you're not successful because you give up too easy. And I think that's where I surround myself by these positive humans, just like you're saying, and individuals that want to crush yeah. life, period. That's all they want. They they yeah. got their hand and they're like, okay, how do I turn this into a royal flush? I'm not happy where I am or I'm happy, but I, I want to be happier. I want to continue to grow as a human and continue these businesses to hire people to give mm-hmm. people opportunities also to make my family be taken care of let them people be happy it's it's awesome to see yep. yeah it is i've <clears throat> i've spent a lot of time thinking about that that exact thing you know and, and it's talked about a lot like the victim mentality the victim mindset people it's a it can be a buzzword online and people arguing but there's there's such a an element of <clears throat> just unadulterated truth to that like there is there is nothing you know, you only have control over how you react to what happens in your life, right? There, you know, you you can make plans and you can do things, but there there is zero zero benefit to spending an, even a breath or an ounce of energy on pointing a finger or getting angry at a circumstance because it happened. Like it's like the what a waste of time! What a waste of energy! So like. I, I, through the grace of God or because of my parents, I don't know why, but when it comes to bad shit, I have the memory of a goldfish. (laughs) Like I just, it does, it serves me no purpose to give this any ounce of my energy because it's already happened. And the only thing I can do is decide from this moment forward, how I'm going to respond to that and either, you know, go in a different direction, double down and keep going in the same direction. You know what I'm saying? But to look in the rear view mirror at all times and be like, this because of that and this happened and that happened like what a fucking terrible way to go through life and i you know and i genuinely i feel like i have a level of empathy for people that struggle with that because there is such a beautiful uh horizon on the other side of that way of thinking and if you can only get there it kind of opens up it's like wow now now you're the person that's steering the ship right if you're just the person who lets you're just on the ship and reacting to every storm that comes your way. You're going to be fucking twirling around in the ocean for your entire life. But if you, if you man the fucking wheel and start turning it in a direction 
you're going to get smacked around by some waves, but you got to, you got to, you got to do some shit with intention. Right. And you got to stop blaming the weather. And that's the way, and like that. And that's what I see, obviously, like exactly what you said with the guys that you surround yourself with the Cody's and the brands, these guys, like they're steering the rudder, man. Like life's not easy for anybody, no. but as long as you're making an attempt to hold that rudder in like not, none of us know what the fuck we're doing. I would say 80% of the time, but we're making intentional decisions and taking actions with a little bit of intention. And we're not pointing fingers and blaming anybody else for anything in our life that we don't like, except ourselves. full responsibility, 100% accountability. That is to me, one of the most, uh, important tenants in life. And, and it's very obvious when you see somebody that lives that way and you can, you can see it right. And away. It, it's, it's also if shit goes wrong, because we still have shit that goes wrong <laughs> like, and we don't then blame for it. We learn from <laughs> it and we're like, Oh shit. Okay. Hey, I'm going to take a note, but I'm going to move the, I'm going to move on. And now, Hey, I have a failure under my belt. We got to weather that storm, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be better. Let's shift. Let's figure out how to fix that and then move on and continuing to crush life versus I, is one of my favorite sayings is the best revenge is utter success. And I live my life by that. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's hard work and drive will get you <laughs> extremely far. Learn how to network, learn how to communicate, go read a book about that. There's a lot of them and learn and then learn to watch how people are open, like <laughs> learn how to talk to people. And then cr I will take that over degrees. I still am, grew up a poor Mexican Asian boy and uh, dropped out of high school, joined the infantry. No, I can't apply that to shit outside. It's like, what can you do? I can shoot guns <clears throat> and war real good. Can I get hired? It's like, it doesn't happen. So I was like, well, I got to, and we just had riding autism, but amazing little kiddo. But I was like, okay, I got daddy has to make this fucking work. <laughs> like I can yep. just be like, well, this is my yes, lot in sir. life. I'm going to have PTSD. I'm going to be a victim, blah, blah, blah. My kid has autism. Ugh. The woe is me. Or I could be like, yo, autism's dope look at him he he's he knows how long flights are right and how long is this drive going to be three hours and 28 minutes daddy see google could have taught me that, but now i have him <laughs> to do it for me the, and then it's just I, now i'm setting examples yeah i was going to say anyone that was listening only he was doing the autism fingers when he said that it was beautiful <laughs> on the camera Cast, casting them spells <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I was going to ask you about that too, because you, you dropped out of high school, never, never finished, I imagine. And that was, I went into the I military. Got the good enough diploma. <laughs> oh, you did get it. I could. Yeah, I had to. Like, that was a big, I was like, do you, uh, well, at that time, you needed that to get into the military or no? Yep. They just, I, weirdly they just enough, they it, right? just, just now that's how bad recruitment is right now that is uh -huh. how all yeah. time low during the war you still during the surge this is like peak war where like when you were going the drill sergeants would like you're gonna die you have you're probably you might die like you're going to war you are going to be in gunfights this is life you are all deploying though each one of you so it was like peak war time but they were still like, you need a GED if you want to get shot at. I was like, Makes okay. sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> also, you can't buy alcohol yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But you can go and die. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, I So, you know, in in out, coming out of the military, I mean, you've just, you, 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 in what I know about you, you're somebody who is a man of many hats. And I think part of that, there could be a level of that that's intrinsic. You know, some people have a, a kind of this, type A personality. It's like, they need to be on this path. They get the good grades and they go and they get that job and they work the same job for 30 years. And they occasionally have missionary sex in the dark with their socks on with their wife, who's disgusted by them for, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's just how some people want to exist. And that's fine. Like there's certain personalities that exist to live that way. But I, you know, you, you have what I would say like an entrepreneurial spirit and you have the tenacity, like it takes a certain level of tenacity to have that. Do you think like how much of you, how much of that do you think was in you before high school? And do you think there was elements of your time in the military 
that helped, you know, whether it's like the discipline, but just from what I understand, like from dropping out of high school, it, it, it feels to me or sounds to me like that kind of structured kind of like, here's what you have to do. Here's the path you have to take. Like that was never on the table for you. It was absolutely not. I would do, I have my dad. I was the only Quavis kid that did not make it through high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only one that didn't. And it yeah. was, and I needed the structure of, I will say I got out, moved to Texas. While well, getting my GED, I started building computers for people. This is like Dell was big, but I was like, oh, I can build computers and I can sell them. So I started doing that on my own. While I was waiting to pay bills and then being a server at Olive Garden, I was uh, fancy. Fuck yeah, yep. server life, baby. Yep. Do server life. And during that, I was like, okay, join the military. Let's get this thing going. And I needed that structure. I needed that, like, hey, like that dress, right dress, waking up early. Don't do that. I'm still not a morning person, never will be. Mm -hmm. But. And then war, camaraderie, all that developed me who I was. And those trials and tribulations, like that forged me. Like, and then when I got out, I was like, okay, hey, where are my struggles right now? Okay, I was super ecstatic just being out. I tried college again. I was like, this literally blows. I <laughs> nope. <laughs> fucking hate this. And I was paid to go to college. Yeah, you were at that. This <laughs> and I was still like, nah, dog. <laughs> like... <laughs> Not for me. Yeah. I and I was like, okay, well, let me do personal training. Yep. I just um you know, Ryden was about to be born at this point. So okay. I was like, hey, like, and well, you I what, got like back 23, 24, 25? Well, like how old are you at this time? 25 is when I had 26 is when I had Ryden. So you're around 25 before he was born. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So 24, <laughs> uh, so 24, I would say like 23, 24, however that time frame works. I was like, okay, first things first. I need to uh, get help, get P uh, like I have PTSD. I need at least to figure this stuff out or start communicating, talk to a therapist, 100%. get that under wraps. And then I seen my friends suffering from it. And that mantra of the military, which is like Fuck therapies for pussies. I was like, mm. therapy is so I don't caca. What if it's not <laughs> though? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What if it's not? Yeah. <clears throat> so I started getting my friends enrolled because they were like, they would call or their spouse would call and there'd be a problem of like, man, hey, let's, buddy, let's just give this a try. You will feel better. And I started mm -hmm. watching that. I was like, dope. And during that time frame, I I was um I lost my daughter. She wasn't born yet. She was like uh, uh, Brooklyn. She was seven months. She was Kylie was seven months pregnant, and we were we are already picked out clothes and all yeah. this stuff for our daughter, and we lost her. It was just yeah. stillborn. So we were like, hey, that sucked. Like that was fucking one of the worst feelings. But I had therapy to help with, and I had therapy, and Kylie had already done therapy at that point. But we got at least get through it together and then we had Raiden. Raiden was on purpose and he's a rainbow baby and then we had Raiden and I was like, man, daddy's poor. <laughs> daddy's <laughs> a personal trainer. I have to work really hard. So while I was doing the personal training, I was getting paid decent. Like we had an apartment, we, we had life. I was like, okay, we're covered. I'm going to teach myself video production <laughs> and I'm gonna hammer down and I'm just gonna lose sleep. I would stay up all night Dude, you, the amount of motivation after my first, I remember Final Fantasy 14, it was an RPG, an MMO. I was so goddamn excited for it. Mm -hmm. I was so excited, Leon. <laughs> and then they released utter trash. It was just a ball. They, they reworked it. They, and yeah, they, dude, they, the game now is called A Realm Reborn because they literally had a meteor come in and destroy the original. And just remade it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because the original was absolute garbage. So I did a YouTube review at that. AV, uh, AVG, an angry video game nerd. I used to love I, his I shit. I used to love him too. James. Bro. Is, he's got the same real name as is James, right? Was that his name? Yep. <clears throat> James. I remember oh, my he's boy. Yeah, this yeah. is why we oh, this is why we get along, Leon. You so. like, dude, your story is strikingly similar to mine, minus the military PTSD part. But <laughs> <laughs> same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but beyond but the teaching yourself how to do all that production shit. Yeah, same deal. And you're like, okay, so I did my first <laughs> review. I remember I edit I shot it on a codec sports player or something like that. And it, yeah. it came with codec software garbage software but 2009 <laughs> i didn't know about premiere or anything so we shot it 
edited it, kicked it out. And again, this is my, and it was just me tearing into Final Fantasy 14. Mm. It did 20,000 views in two days. And in 2009. That's massive. That's viral. That, I, yeah, yeah, I was like, fucking made it, That's bro. Viral. And then Time Magazine was calling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I was just like, President dope. Obama was like, "Congratulations, son! You just made the front page of YouTube." But, uh, that that uh, that Eli guy, uh, I re really like his content. Uh, so <laughs> I just start doing that. People are like, "Man, you need to do more." So I continued to do more of those, and then I started watching Freddie Wong, yeah. um, Rocket Jump, Corridor Digital, and I started learning VFX and then camera angles. So when I was doing my video game reviews, I could add these little comedy sections. That was, that's what I love doing, these little skits I could insert. Yeah. And I had a blast. And after four years of doing that, again, I did that with zero pay for a long fucking time. That's how it goes, baby. Uh, of course. <laughs> and I was doing all my other jobs. And at this time, I was roofing. Mm -hmm. Awesome job roofing and <laughs> I can, I'm, I'm i'm on the fence of whether that was sarcastic or not <laughs> oh i love roofers god bless your goddamn souls but well, dear you god have, is you it you are have mexican too so it makes sense it was my it was my calling yeah. <laughs> i just woke up one day i'm like ha ah, what why am i laying it, this down <laughs> and the other half is a mathematician it's really incredible how genetics work <laughs> It's perfect. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, let's continue this. And then I went to, I will still say it is one of my favorite moments was PAX 2013 or 2014. It was that first, 2013 maybe, uh, I'd have to look. It was that first giant PAX. Yep. And I remember I was like, okay, I got a ticket. Gallagher uh, was working with me at, uh, on the, what fuck, the Video Gamer Addict, TVGA. That was my original channel yep. and Gallagher and me were working on this thing we were doing skits at this point with VFX and I was like oh I want to go to this convention PAX West I'm going do you want to come he's like no I was like how much are your tickets I was like oh my god $120 <laughs> yikes Shit. that's like half like, a roof right there <laughs> bro <laughs> <laughs> so I was like okay I know what I'm doing I just I'll eat like ramen and rice and then that way right in and baby mama are taken care of I just won't eat this week until I get paid, Love it. but I'll have enough to do this and then have like a couple of beers. So I went, did packs, had a blast. And then Freddie Wong was going up the escalator as I was going down. Yeah. I was like, Fred, Freddie, holy shit. Love your shit. And he's like, thanks. We're going to, uh, you can watch us play video games. So I went down and went back up. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, we <laughs> riding this escalator back up. So I met like Clint and all them. They were like playing video games. I was just bullshit and laughing with them. And I was like, oh, well, okay, bye. Left. So I go do look around the con a little bit more because I didn't want to overstay my welcome with dudes. I don't fucking know. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I'm waiting for a taxi. Then they walk up next to me and then they're waiting for a taxi. I was like, oh, shit. Hey, guys. And they're like, oh, what the fuck? I was like, you guys having uh, you're leaving? They're like, yeah, we're going to go do some stuff. I was like, fuck, yeah, great meeting you again. Got in, and then I went to a bar, and I was like, hey, doing some stuff. And then I went to another bar, which is the gaming bar. So I'll just, um, I forget what it is. It's just like arcades and everything. Sure shit, then they walk in. I'm like, oh, hi, hi. Can I get a selfie this time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is, I was like, hey, can I get a selfie? So I took a <laughs> selfie with them. And they're like, yeah, man. I was like, can I get you a drink? And they're like, ah, oh, no, we're actually leaving. Uh, we're going to go to a, a, a VIP party. I was like, oh, well, have fun. Again, great meeting you guys. And then I stayed, they left, and I was just talking to people because I went by myself. Gallagher's like, no, I don't want to go. It's not worth the time. I text him. I was like, hey, I've met Freddie three times. He's like, fuck, I should have went. I was like, you should have. <laughs> you fucking should have. And uh, VI, then, then I am having a drink. Girl walks up to me, and she's like, hey, I have a, hey, what are you doing? I was like, drinking, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm about to go to a VIP party. Uh, do you want to come with me? I was like, fuck yeah, let's do this thing. I don't even know, remember what kind of, she was a content creator in the video game space. I was like, yeah, you want to do a shot real quick? She's like, yep, we did a shot. And she's like, okay, let's go. Let's go to this VIP party. I was like, what is it for? It's like Konami. So I was like, at Metal Gear Solid. I was like, Solid Snake on my chest. That's, That's the reason boy. I joined the military. Yeah, I was like, uh. so we go there and walk up. She gets us into the VIP party, walk through, and I'm like, hey, drink. I look over, and it's the guys. It's Freddie and all of them, and they're like, what the fuck? How'd you get in here? I was like, I'll uh, talk to that girl. She invited me, and they're like, you can talk to girls? 
I was like, come here, guys. <laughs> I was like, time to teach you nerds <laughs> something you don't know. <laughs> that is so funny. Dude, so we drank, we taught, we were bullshit, and I was introducing them to different people, and we had a blast. And so then if she, if she looks you in the eyes, what are you supposed to say? <laughs> Pee yourself. <laughs> Shiver in fear. <laughs> Freddie, you're a fucking legend, dude. Just look at her. <laughs> Up and down her real quick, slap her on the ass and grab her arm and walk out of there with her. Okay. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> and I met Hideo Kojima. Oh, man. Uh, dude, that was like, that was like pivotal night. And I left. They all, they got my number and we bounced. And then that next year leading up, I remember texting uh, Clint and Jimmy, uh, Freddie's brother, Jimmy Wong. I was like, hey, I got extra tickets. I bought some just in case I, if you guys need any. And they're like, Hey, that's awesome. Actually, uh, do you want to hang out with us over the weekend? I was like, fuck yeah, I do. So they were like, yeah, just crash in our Airbnb or hotel, whatever it was, and we'll just have a blast. And then they took me to their actual house because their parents lived out there. And yep. we just, and after that, they're like, hey, do you want to move to LA and make this thing happen? Do you want to learn? Do you want to work for us? And I was like, and at that time, that was Rocket Jump was they were the, the pinnacle. They were the one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, they were the yeah. biggest youtube content this is like 10 million was yeah. unheard of and they VFX were at nine. and all the videos I, w I used to swing from their nuts dude every time they'd upload i'd watch that shit loved it they were legends and i didn't know you at the time I, i'm sure there was a period of time i was watching their shit where you were i don't know or gaffer or what the fuck were you doing yeah. or you I was were on video game high school like i'm a character in it okay which is fucking like i was like oh mm -hmm. man and then corridor doing and i just did vfx because a lot of people didn't I forget. I just had a conversation the other day with um, one guy, and he was like, "I just found out that you can do 3D animation, VFX, and you're like a high level." I was like, "Yeah, I used to do that back in the day." And they're like, "What the fuck, dude?" I was like, "I have a lot of autism, and I distribute it into the video world, and I love it so much. I but, enjoy learning uh, things, dude. And it is just that adventure. And I, if I wouldn't have took that risk." And I, I, you've probably done the same. It's not sure. having a safety net. Of, yes. The safety net, if you're comfortable, you're not going to learn anything. Living in comfortability is awesome. It's great if that's for you. Being uncomfortable is how you grow as a human. Yes. That is how you learn. That is how you develop yourself. Diamonds are forged in under extreme pressure and conditions, yeah. not Love just that. out in the open. And that is why I still live that way to this day where I'm like, we got to take chances on everything we do and i'm fine with it if it fails it's on me i'm not gonna let it crush me though i'm gonna no. just continue just like ptsd like any of those little steps in my life riding's autism i could be like oh it's, just, it's so difficult being a parent of an autistic kid yes <sighs> like or fuck that it's fucking awesome yeah uh let's let watch and now thankfully people come and they're like hey my kid is so uh, my kiddo has autism. Like, what were signs? What's what do you do? And I'm like, ah, don't be stressed. I was like, it's they're it's gonna be annoying as shit sometimes, yeah. but it's also just amazing a lot of the times. And that 90 90 percent awesome with those 10 percent burst uh, outbursts or things. Yeah, you'll be fine. You, you just crush life. And then now now I get to talk to Leon. Yeah, now, now we get to link up on the internet and talk about our, our trials and tribulations in life and wax poetic while we sip whiskey and drink high nooners. I mean, oh. come on. Is there anything better? I uh, <laughs> just got to pull the nooner up on cam. So I had seen, and I know, I think I may have seen this in, in an article somewhere, but you, so you did a uh, a short video about your son, Ryder. Um, Ryden. Yeah, right, excuse me, Ryden. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fucking dropping the ball. Listen, it's my third episode. Give me some leeway. I'm embarrassed. I might just end it here. I'm going to try to push through. I'm going to try to push through. I'm so, really your daughter, Ryder. Yeah. Uh, right. You right. did a cute video. <laughs> You've only said his name 50 times. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention to me on the flip side. So, so you made a video about uh, Ryden. And, uh, I, man, I was moved. Like I hadn't seen that until recently just because I was like, oh, I know Eli pretty well, but I'm going to like, I've never like gone balls deep in your back catalog. I mean, we've gone videos. balls deep in each other, but like, that's just when we're <laughs> yeah. in Texas together. But when it comes to content, yeah. So yeah, man, that, that was special. And just, you know, as, as a, a father to a five-year-old myself, you know, I never knew until having a son, like just the 
the the level of unconditional love that is possible like as a parent and 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 you know as long as i've known you just seeing that in you and obviously in and taking his autism which for so many people you know it's not the most uncommon problem or uh it's not the most uncommon condition rather and some people really let it negatively affect their their life and their circumstance and the way they parent and everything and it's like you the way you look at it and frame it and the the way you you celebrate the beauty of it while recognizing the the struggle is so special and like in watching that video and seeing like i was just like oh god like because i don't think it would have moved me so much before i was a dad i would have been like oh this is sweet but seeing that it was palpable that level of love you have for your son and i mean that just I don't know, man, that was awesome. So when I hear you talk about him and I hear you, you know, like celebrating his victories and really trying to find the things that he is, you know, he ha he's, uh, you know, he's good at and the things he has acumen in and, and doubling down on those and trying to be there as his cheerleader for him. That, that's so fucking cool. And I love yeah. seeing that. I so just want to commend you in that. And I, I, I that's not even a question. I was just like, I watched that video. I was like, I have to mention this when I talked to him because I hadn't seen, I know it's four or five years old now and it was a couple minutes long, but it was just so cool. Um, the, you just have a real talent for making content that's impactful like that. That's that one. And the brotherhood one are my two most proud. I've like making comedy video sketches. It's, it, it's awesome. I love it. It's comedy is extreme. Like I, I've praised you before. It's like comedy is extremely hard to do and if you can nail it you are now like comedy and making somebody cry those are the two hardest things you can do horror you can do like anything else easy those th comedy and emotion to do Emotional it properly impact. yeah you are refining your craft that's why i love your stuff i'm like homeboy just he knows his fucking beats it's amazing and i love it and then like Ryden's video i knew that one I cried multiple times editing. I was like, okay, that should be good. If I'm crying while I'm making this, that's I'm impactful. Like, yeah. <laughs> Cut, paste, <laughs> audio, five decibels. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're just filling it out. And then Brotherhood, if you haven't watched that one, that one. I've seen it. Yep. Oh, dude, that was, was I awesome. knew that was a banger. I We filmed that in two days. I remember I had this idea i was like okay i got it i got the sound everything in my head i know the shots and i filmed it in two days edited it that night had it done kicked it to matt and then he facetimed me and he was like he had tears and i was like what, like, the, bro, fuck, what the bro fuck? yeah yeah and i was like yeah we did it and then and we had to sit on it for four months before and then we got wow. the the poetry and everything i was gonna say now was that, done. Was, that was something that was a, a poem that matt best wrote is that am i correct in that he wrote yeah for it so we felt dude we filmed that entire thing i just i had all that shots and the music in my head and i was like here can you now write a poem for it yep. he was like got it <laughs> and so he wrote the poem after it was all done he's like here's the poem and i was like fucking perfect this is this is a quality piece of content for yeah, a memorial day and the veteran community and when we i remember we knew it was good well emo like me having crying watching it just editing it and then him immediately same thing it was like cool we have something and then i remember yeah. heather came and watched it cried she's like what the fuck i was like hey and <laughs> it's then <working>. we had <laughs> hardened veterans came to brcc and yeah. they were sitting and we we're like oh it was these old guys and I was like, oh, yeah, we got a video. We can put it up real quick. And it was like 10 older dudes. And then it ends. I turn around and they're like. Yeah. <laughs> Lip quivering. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, we got a banger. And then Memorial Day release it. It does 40 million views on Facebook in two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, okay, that was a banger. And then all of it's like, video. Dear God, you crushed my soul. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. hey. I, I did not sign hey. on to Facebook today to become emotionally <laughs> annihilated, but here we are. I am a mess. <laughs> I love that stuff. No, it it's was having awesome. this. It, it, oh. it was a dedication essentially to for Memorial Day for people that friends and and, and comrades that that had, that it, you know never got to come home. But yeah, it was awesome. I watched it. I was like, man, that was that was poignant. It was something else. So, you know, it, content creation is a funny thing because. You, you can go in, there's a million different ways you can do it and go into it. You can, you know, some of the stuff that I do is more topical and just like knee jerk looking to entertain people. And obviously there's a comedy aspect to what you do, but there's the other side of that, that where 
you can go in with the lens of, you know, how do I take some of my experiences and create this piece of original content that can resonate with people that might share these same feelings? And there's something so beautiful about that. And it's easy to, you know, I sometimes get jaded because, you know, after you, if you, if anyone that spends enough time online, it's just the internet's so saturated with content that is just soul sucking, obviously. Right. So it's, it's nice to, to watch stuff like that, that is, you know, impactful in a way for people and re remember that, you know what, there is still people out there that are making content that is good and that people enjoy and that aren't just being pumped out by fucking Facebook factory content farms. And <laughs> yeah, 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 it's good. They're like, oh, it wasn't like you grew up. What, what was your main thing? I actually would love to know. It's like, what was your first thing where you're like, I want to do content, even if it's this degree, but I want to fucking do this. this I mean, so harking back to the part of your story where you said, um, you know, you basically stayed up all night teaching yourself how to do, uh, you know, VFX and, and edit and all these things. Like you had no experience there that I was kind of coming from the same place. The, the content piece started for me from a music perspective. I was into this day. I have them up there. I have from 2008, nine, 10, I have covers of me playing the acoustic guitar. I was going through a phase post-college where I, you know, I, I did the sales job fucking hated it like kind of went through the same thing you did where you like worked in you, whatever job you were you were like uh with the warehouse you're like uh no absolutely not i uh, fuck mm -hmm. this <laughs> like i did it for like eight months i was good at it but i was like i would rather literally slam my ball bag in a window fucking for 15 <laughs> minutes and go in and try to sell people pipetters and fucking pcr strips today i wanted to kill myself so <laughs> like in <an> this <laughs> yeah so i was like i need to do something that is something just that's not this and that's when i I had a history of music, grew up in a household with a mother that's a, a, an incredible musician, concert pianist, always been like the lead choir director at the church. So I had this background. I was like, maybe I'll be a musician. So I went through this phase of like wanting to be John Mayer, like the next John Mayer at the time, thought I could be this kind of cute singer songwriter with this like beautiful I can, I can picture. You definitely look down and you look up. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You played looking down most of the time. Like the look. chubby, clean shaven <laughs> face with like the swept hair, dude. I yeah. looked like a, I looked like a lesbian. I honestly did. It was the outrageous. Lesbian. Yeah, you could get you could have mistaken me for a lesbian at the time. It was wild. Rosie O'Donnell's playing. <laughs> it's quiet. She's beautiful. She has a beautiful voice. Uh, but that was that was my soiree into just like I bought a flip camera. Like literally, I still have it on my mantle up here. I look at it every day because I'm like, that's where you started. You decided, hey, I'm gonna get this fucking three hundred dollar camera from Best Buy that records in one sixty p, and you're gonna upload your fucking fat bald face to the internet, <laughs> singing dumbass songs. I was doing like Jonas Brothers covers. I look back now and I want to just punch <laughs> myself in the dick when I watch it. Bro, it's so brutal it's so to watch old content. But it's like, but it's so fucking sweet and poetic looking back because like you're laying the pavement for where you are now. Right. And like, that's, oh, yeah. that's what it is. So like the idea, like anybody that doesn't look back and cringe, like you weren't trying hard enough. Like you got, you know what I'm saying? Like everyone should be able to look back and just have that moment where they're like, what the fuck was I doing? Otherwise, like, what are you doing? You got to be trying new shit. So it, it wasn't until I went through the band phase and then it was about 2015, 16 left the band amicably. I was settling down with my getting more serious with my now wife. And this is my favorite. I've told the story a few times, but uh, I was just like, I think I'm want to, I think I want to start taking the online content thing seriously. I fucked around with it five, six years ago with the music thing, but I think this is where people's attention is going. Let's see what happens. And she, at that time, I don't know why she let me do this. I was like this long haired band freak, like, didn't have two pennies to rub together. She let me borrow her credit card and buy an iMac. And for 16 months, I stayed up every night until 2 a.m. like watching tutorials on lynda.com, learning how to produce in Logic Pro, figuring out Final Cut, downloading all these fucking plugins for, for, for Logic, learning how to produce. And like that was the beginning of my commentary journey. And the thing that really set me apart, I think, was a lot of the production techniques I learned, I was implementing in my commentaries and doing a lot of little audio candy. I was like ping pong delaying little sound effects and like 
people came from watching like Leafy is here, like the biggest dog, like these dog shit produced videos. And they came over and watched a video from this 31 year old weirdo. And they're like, Oh, what is that? What is that sound in my ears? That's crazy. So I was just adding these little elements that I think made me stand out. And that was kind of my initial spark where I, I, I was able to have this little audience that started to grow that appreciated and watched what I was doing. And like you said, at that point, I didn't, I had no fucking clue. You know, I was working in restaurants and I was still playing gigs here and there. Um, but it was just like, you know what? Maybe, who knows? Let's keep fucking pushing the gas and see what happens. And so it was just a lot of years of, it was just a lot of years of, you know, working at the restaurant and taking care of, you know, the girlfriend and then wife. And then after, at night when everyone goes to bed, just on the computer, figuring it the fuck out. And, and keywords, a lot of years. Like yeah. no one had <laughs> yeah. this. No one, none of our friend group had something happen overnight. No, nope. no. Nope. Other than Windagoon. Windagoon, you son you of a son biscuit. Of a bitch. And Cody, Dude, I like, like video moment. five and it's like <laughs> video five. It's on an iPhone. He's sitting there. It's like 18 million views, 30 <laughs> minutes. I'm like, unfucking believable. <laughs> He got that like PewDiePie algorithm love. Like when they switched to long watch time and PewDiePie was uploading like 50 minute let's plays and all of a sudden he's getting 50 million views per video. Bro, do you remember that with the PewDiePie Minecraft when he brought <laughs> Minecraft back? Yes. Single handedly raised it from the dead. Dude, Indy, have you, you Indy, does Indy know that story? Yes, he does. Indy is oh, okay. in the call with us as well. He's our producer. Yes. Let us know. He just looks beautiful. I just wanted to say, but yeah, dude, that PewDiePie. I remember watching that where he just started releasing Minecraft videos, and I watched him. I, dude, that was a journey, and I was like, man. And then you look, and it's like forty million views, thirty nine million views, thirty five million views, thirty five million views. I'm like, homeboy is get, and this is daily. This is daily. He's uploading. He was this. cooking every single day, cooking. It was insane. And, but it was like everyone just took a lot of time. Some people, yes, you might have outliers that like blow up really quickly. But for the most part, everyone has sacrificed. It is sacrifice. And that's what people don't understand. It is the level of sacrifice to get to the position you're at or like the other guys. It's just they, they just was like, man, this sucks, but I have to do it. Consistency over time. And mm -hmm. I think to, revisit what you said earlier it's that uh <clears throat> it's that you have to learn to be comfortable with being very uncomfortable i think is one of the main things and that comes from it, it kind of when you're doing something that is a little bit less of a traditional trajectory for career life whatever it is and this has taken me a long time to learn because e even when i was in a restaurant it was like it's not like a salary, like I'm working for tips and stuff, but it's like, I know what I'm, I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to show up to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to walk away with cash and then I'm going to clock out and I don't have to think about that fucking thing until I go back the next day. And that is some people really like that, you know, because, but that, but there's a ceiling to that and there, you know what I mean? You can only make so many tips. You're trading your time for money and when you get into a different space where you're now doing stuff where you're creating things or building a business or a brand or whatever it is, it's can be incredibly overwhelming and very uncomfortable because you feel like the floor in the rug can get pulled out at any time. I mean, I still, I don't know how you feel like that, how you feel, but I still sometimes like lie awake in bed, like and struggle falling asleep. Cause I think I'm going to wake up and just everything's going to be rugged and I'm going to be like at zero. Like my, someone's going to hack my bank account. My YouTube channel is going to be deleted. And I'm like, oh, that's probably unlikely, but I but also, I also appreciate that I have those thoughts because that's the reason why I get up every day and I'm continuing to try to do new shit and, and diversifying your content. Yeah. Diversifying. And I go through phases where I get complacent, but after enough time, I realized, hey, buddy, you're getting complacent. You need to fucking slap yourself in the face and start working again. You know what I mean? Because complacency is a close cousin of slow death. <laughs> yes, and complacency kills. That's what we say in war is complacency kills. So you yes. have to like, and like I used, still use that as you were saying where you're like a nine to five, but it's comfortable being uncomfortable or like what I do. I'm like, if shit gets bad, I'm like, oh, man, this sucks. This really sucks. Not getting shot at. Yeah, Could I can get worse. through this. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. I can get through this. This is my okay. sixty-first gunfight. So you know what? <laughs> Probably gonna be okay. Yeah, it's not one hundred and forty out. Uh, I'm not wearing body armor. 
Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I'll make it uh, today. I'll check that box today and move on Jesus. and continue down this path. And it is, and it's awesome because you get a like. You learned content creation, but now you've also learned you're you're a self you're a business owner now, and now you know marketing. You understand like all those little things that you also had to learn during this process and this yeah. growth, and you can take that. And it is a very high paying skill to have. Yes. To be able to implement that into uh, or help others with it or companies and just charge them for it. Yeah. I think something that's underappreciated that uh, in hindsight I've, I've really learned to appreciate is it, when you're, when you're in the phase of like, you don't have something established yet in your, in your learning, you're trying, you're throwing pickles at the fridge, right. To see what sticks. <laughs> And like, we all go, we all, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's a phrase, but that might be something I came up with. <laughs> You've never my new way of saying. Yeah. Usually they stay, they slowly drive. It's like a pickle race. Like some of them slowly slide down and it's like, you want those motherfuckers to stick and stay. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> I think that's like down my on that. But... old metaphor or something. <laughs> Anyways, you make like a tree and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you're trying all types of shit. And, but what, what's happening? Like, even if nothing's popping off, like you're struggling, like you're trying something, it doesn't work one failure to the next, like you're learning skills. Right. And that was a, the same thing. Like I wanted to be a musician. I spent year, you know, I uploaded a YouTube. I spent years gigging and playing in bars. We made albums. I didn't become a musician that informed, you know, that created this rock star lifestyle, but I took what I learned in, in the musical sense. I learned, I took that and, and that helped me learn how to produce. And I used that and I used that to help me learn to make better commentary videos in little diss tracks. So like you're just iterating on your skill set and, you know, trying new things and pivoting to something if something doesn't work and, if you do it long enough, you're bound to find something that you're decently good at. And you're kind of drawing upon all of these skills you've learned through all your years of trying. And, you know, you can find something that might stick. And then I think that's how it goes for a lot of people. Like, like you said, you know, you have all of these years of just, uh, throwing pickles at the fridge <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and eventually one of them sticks <laughs> And I mean, it's, it's like me doing podcasts. I would have a million years. I, like podcast was never something where I was like, can't wait to do that. Right. Right. Ever still to this day. I don't think of unsub as a big podcast or anything like that. And it's just, I'm like, Oh, it's a podcast. Don't we make me do bring that. up the statistics, my friend. It's a big <laughs> podcast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just super weird to be like host one. Cause it was something I, Dude, I remember people came and they're like, man, I watched you on a podcast from years, years ago. It's like a Drinking Bros episode or an old BRCC one. And sure. this is years ago. And they're like, Eli was super quiet. I was like, yeah, I, didn't have, I was a guest and I there was multiple guests. So I was like, oh, I don't have to talk. I'll let everyone else talk. Yep. Never in my life was, was like, I want to do podcasts and this is what I, I'm going to make a, another career or a business out of. And it just... As you said, it that one fell into the lap, and then we just continued growing because I was like, I want to do content, I want to make movies, and I still want to do that stuff, and I'm going to make that happen. But you find something that works, you're like, okay, now I'm going to use this to fund that stuff. Hundred percent. Dreams aren't dreams aren't stopping, but this will help me achieve that dream quicker. Yeah, yeah. There's the economically viable things that work, and then there's doing the things that you want to work that might not be economically viable and finding the balance between those two. And it is amazing. Like once you have, like if you are fortunate to have something that works, you can, it, it, it's incredible. Like having some resources available to, to, to put into some things that you're more passionate about and trying to do things in other genres. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I can't recommend it enough. I don't know. You know, I, I know a lot of people and people that watch and listen, like everyone has their trials, their, their things in life. And there's many people that maybe wish they were in a job they're not in or, or somewhere else. And I think like at the very least, like no matter what you're doing, if, if you're, if you're working or you're at a job that has, you know, a ceiling, right? There's a trajectory. You can work the corporate ladder, but please, 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 please have something that, 
tickles your fucking pink little pussy lips and <laughs> work on it. Couple couple hours a week, like whatever. Do, like don't even think about monetizing it. Just have like a hobby, something. And I hate like the word side hustle makes me cringe a little bit because like Instagram influencers ruin that. But uh, but yeah, I just think there there needs to be. I think everyone just needs something outside of the normal occupation that they can work on that, you know, at least brings them a little bit of joy. And then, Hey, if you do it enough and you get good enough and you've done it for enough years, like maybe, maybe you can monetize it. You never know. You might be able to monetize this thing, but chase that just your, goes back to the, like, don't be complacent thing. Like it's just chase that, fuck, be a big dreamer, like chase it. it th- people might laugh. People might not believe in it, but as long as you just at the end, if you're just like, I'm going to make that happen no matter what, Chances are, like Kevin Hart talks about it, a lot of these people, uh, Chris, um, I literally like uh, any big star, The Rock, whoever it is, they talk about that dream and they're like, man, like Dave Chappelle just had one. He's like, he is the, he, he's like, I am the biggest dreamer. He's like, I had this vision that it would be on the stage one day and I made it happen, but it took till I was the age of 50 to make this dream possible. And that's yeah. something you have to stand by. It's not going to happen overnight or a year or five years. I started YouTube in 2009. Yes, sir. It's 2014. And I finally have my own channel that actually gets posted. Well, not even my own it's unsub, but yeah. you know, I haven't even done now. I'm starting my own podcast shit, but finally, <laughs> <I'm> like, Hey, <laughs> we keep venturing. <laughs> yeah, well, you're on episode two or three, right? You're doing, you're have unsub, but now you're doing what you told me maybe yesterday. What, what are you calling it? You have a name for it yet? I'm not, you just, we just, haven't even came up with that part. I was like, it's under the Eli Double Tap, the channel. Eli it, Double Tap show. Yeah. And we had Cody, <laughs> Cody was on it, Donut, yeah, and it was yeah. like, it's another side people aren't used to. It was like Cody talking about, like, kind of like what we just did, where it's a fun, there's laughs, and you're just, you have that opportunity to enter. You, me, we have these opportunities to interview and talk about, talk to people that are, have amazing stories right. and they're like crushing life. And they, yeah. and if they're in our friend circle, they're in that friend circle for a reason. Yeah. I love that. I, in exactly, you know, I, in talking to you just over the last hour and hour and a half, whatever it is, like, um, you know, I, I know a lot about you just from my time spent with you, but I'm learning a lot about you as well. And, and I think for me, that's a selfish part of the selfish reason why I want to do stuff like this is because I'm hungry to get to know people. I'm hungry to hear, uh, stories from people that come from all different places in life. It, because I think that's one of the best ways you can level up is to just learn about other people. What are the things you've gone through? What has worked for you? How are you navigating life at the stage you're in right now? And what did it take to get there? You know, what are some things that people that watch you on unsubscribe podcast don't know about you? Like you didn't just come out of the womb as with a fucking SM seven B, right? There was a long fucking road to get to that point to become yeah. a podcaster. So <laughs> That's what's so fun for me and why I'm excited about just doing the style of content because it's it's something I'm hungry for. I wanted to ask you, you had mentioned this was a very brief moment and it just struck me. You said you pulled down, you had the metal, you had the solid snake tattoo. Oh yeah. The solid snake tattoo. You're like, this is why this is why I joined the military. And I'm like, do you think we need to go back to making better military themed games to ups to up recruitment numbers because right now we're really, we, you we, think you think cod's not cutting it anymore <laughs> i don't dude it is it's so weird watching this new generation that and yeah. it's like war is crazy I, I don't wish it upon people i'm like join the air force stay away from war but it is it's gonna happen but it is like i know all the recruitments especially like special forces and stuff which would have a higher uh higher people joining for that very all time low, and I think those old the Metal Gear. I don't know about you, Metal Gear Solid Three had just came out, and I was I think I beat it, and then I was in the army like two weeks later because it was like right before the holidays. It was like I got beat this game. I'm joining. I already wanted to do this my entire life. Let's yeah, book go, and then and there it was, and and then I joined, and I was like, and oh, then, and now there were obviously other concurrent factors that went into that decision, but. <laughs> metal gear was a big one because yeah <laughs> I, this is probably the dumbest thing to do <laughs> i 
is that joy because of a video game? But. Yeah, but listen, <laughs> we all have our influences, and like they're what like the interesting thing. You know, I say this as somebody who I have a I have a an, an elder sibling who is a, a a USMC vet. Um, so you know, I near and dear to my heart, military service uh, was never was never my path, but good. I, yeah, but, but <laughs> right. good. But I, you know the sh kind of the the shift of of perspective just on how like the patriotism the stuff in the in the 50s 60s 70s like the every, the game has really changed over the last 20 30 years in the last 5 to 10 even uh, whether that's social media whether it's government malfeasance i think you know i have a a, a couple other uh people i'm close with that have uh, a history of special forces and you know his thing right now is is just the the leadership at the government level and at the higher bureaucracy levels of the military is in shambles. Trash, dude. And that's, in shambles. We're not. It's mind blowing to me that you have all these shifts, and it's not like even. It is all these shifts and the trying to adopt like a PC culture. You can't yell at the soldiers. You got to give them their cell phone. You have to do each and everything. Hey, don't yell at them anymore. Don't scream. Hey, shark attacks can't happen. Yeah. Hey, you got to be respectful of them. You are go. you're creating warriors, not fucking they're tools for the government, unfortunately, but yeah. that's what they are. You're, you have signed away your life. The second you did that contract until your contract ends. Right. You are trying to develop warriors. That's not, you well, can't have not both sides of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's, that's why to me as, again, someone who is, hasn't been through it, but for, as an outsider perspective, it seems so silly to, like you said, these are government contracted, you know, you sign your life over to the government and you are, there's, they, they tell you to go there and you go there. And it feels like we're doing these young men and women a disservice by not preparing them for the realities of true trauma and pain and hardship. And I think that's part of what, you know, the, the, the military process always has been. And like, until, you know, recently where everything's recorded and all of a sudden you have these problems and people's feelings get hurt. And it's like, dude, the, there should be no place for this talk of feelings when you're training people to go give their life in war. Like, they're okay. like the, zero. Nobody fuck gives it. a single singular fuck about your feelings when you're on a battlefield. So like this idea that you need to be nice and you can't yell, like that shit needs to stay so far the fuck away from the military. It, it should be the last place that shit creeps in. And I think, you know, not, not to go down a political rabbit hole because the word, I is know where it overused, is used, but like, <laughs> yeah. but like, what are we doing here? Like it just, so it yeah, I, and that was, was the conversation in, in, in with this this friend who's he's in his forties. He's a little bit older than me, and he's uh, he he was uh, he's a he's an army veteran, and he spent a lot of years jumping out of planes and shit. And he um, he's he's in the process of thinking about pot, like I don't he's he he knows a lot of people still in the military in leadership positions, and they're like we need we need leaders and he's thinking about possibly going back in to help try and yeah, I know, right. Listen, wow. like to steer, cause he, in his core, he is a, he's kind of, he's a Patriot, right? Like he, yeah. his, he, his heart, I think, um, he wants it to be successful. Bit. Yeah. He mourns a little bit as he's seen the, the way things have gone. And it's just been interesting to me. I'll be curious to see how it, how it goes, but I don't you know. I don't that that's again just as someone who hasn't been involved that perspective but I just think that you know if this type of culture this like hey we need to make sure everyone's feeling included and safe the w the military is the last place that type of culture should be present no know. it should <laughs> just not exist it's like hey okay what are we doing I will tell you this when I when we were about to deploy do you know what videos we were we had to watch oh, as Jesus. a, a battalion watch. or as a company, we had that. to watch. Um, there was, I forget the sniper's name over there is an Iraqi sniper. He had a special name and uh, he would just record himself fucking shooting on patrols or if dudes are like in their guard, 
like they're getting complacent they're not moving when you like you're doing patrols you try to you always try to move a little even if you're stationary and pulling security you mm -hmm. like just movement move make yourself a hard target so this dude would just record himself shoot like just killing american troops and we had to watch all that to know what we were getting ready for there was no yeah. feelings it was like hey this could be you you have to yeah. watch american soldiers die like absorb this consume yeah. this because we have to uh what is it it's called fuck um not demoralize it did demoralize you but of it was like desensitizing training yeah, yeah, so it was yeah. part of that training yeah so when you're there you are kind of desensitized to it and you can react. It's no different than gunfights. Like when you're training, you're doing shoot houses or they're shooting the bullets over you and you're low crawling. The purpose of that is so when that first gunshot goes out, your immediate reaction is safe to semi gun is up, finding target, shooting bullets downrange. So you automatically react to that gunfire. Like it would be like, I had, I remember one who was like, AK goes off. I'm in the middle of the field and I see three pieces of dust kick up in front of me. My immediate reaction, pop, 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 pop. I just start shooting straight. I don't know where the bad guy is yet. I'm just going to get rounds down to hopefully drop them. Yeah. And then we're going to be scanning. And then that turned into like a 10 minute fucking gunfight that I was yeah. like, only day I was like, I'm going to die today. Yeah. 100% going to die. <laughs> and you actually sang about it in the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I've told that story on Unsub where it was like yeah. the the headphones with me because we didn't have uh, Peltors at that time or they had Peltors which if you shoot guns uh, it it lowers the the gunshot you know what I'm talking about the electronic headphones uh, yeah that's like it deletes some of the frequencies essentially so it makes them quieter yeah yeah so back in the day those weren't the 2007 those weren't the best yeah right. Yeah, they, they, the technology so, wasn't quite there yet. No, so yeah. I mean, it just muted everything fantastically. So my team, I'm in the striker on the 249 machine gun. My team is pinned down by a sniper, and uh, we have to back the striker up and get them in. So we're just looking for a vertical superiority where they might be shooting. I see billing, so I start like cranking off at that as we back up, drop the hatch. They have to mount on. They get in. I'm just fucking laying the hate. Just go, 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 They all get in. Ramp goes up and I'm just fucking fire and fire. And I feel pulling on my leg, pulling on my pants. I'm like, what? What? And like, Ava, I just see. Can't hear anything. What? What? I go like this. And they're like, Eli, they're shooting at you. I was like, what are you? Like cracks. I was like, oh, oh, I go in the hell hole. Because I couldn't hear the rounds going next to my head. So Jesus. bullets, when you get shot out, they they snap. Yes. So you have a whiz, kind of close. The crack means those bullets are fucking very, very Hitting. close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was just cracking over me. The old pelt horse didn't let me know that. <laughs> so you have no idea there's bullets whizzing by your head at this time. Yeah. Oh, and, I, and I said, I was like, man, that sniper or whoever was shooting at me was probably like, this man. He fears nothing. Because <laughs> it would be super demoralizing or you're shooting at a dude and you see him in an optic and he's just like... Six times <laughs> unfazed. Yeah. Yeah. Just unfazed, just oh laying my. hate. Until right after I heard it, I was like, whoop, my head would just went straight down. I was like, oh, I almost died. Woo. Got out, exfilled. Everyone was A-OK. -okay. <laughs> Holy motherfuck, dude. Yeah, I literally my palms get sweaty hearing that shit. As <laughs> literally a story that's however many years old and then I'm on a couch in the comfort of my own house, so I can only imagine the type of fucking brass balls you you grow in a situation like that. It's <laughs> unbelievable. I appreciate And then we just laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean like what you know. I think that that dark humor obviously that's so prevalent in in military and vets, it's like it it is a I think it's it's a necessity, right? Like what else it's a coping mechanism. It's how else are you going to do it? You have your moments where you have to talk seriously about it, but it's like, I think at some point you just have to find a way to, Hey, I'm fucking what I don't know. Humor. Yeah. What, 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 else, what else can you do? I yeah, appreciate just, you sharing yeah. stories like that, man. I know I've, I've talked to you a lot, but never heard any stories from, from, from back in your active military time. But I think, you know, you've given me your sweet, precious time here tonight. And I'm so appreciative appreciate of that. It. I mean, just, 
getting to sit down and talk to you in a more kind of personal setting, even though it's via the internet. The uh, interwebs. Yeah, the it's, interwebs. It's been a real treat for me. What do you... Oh, I wanted to ask you actually at the beginning, but I didn't. You have, this is going to be coming out right like in the middle of your little live date unsubscribe podcast run. Four shows, right? Four shows. How did that come? Was that, was this like, was this catalyzed by you? Was like, how did this come about? Like, obviously there's a demand for it, but what was, what, how did you know it was time to try and uh, do a couple of live shows? Dude, um, still at, like, I- that gets me nervous again I'm when I look gonna, at like that versus that was my follow like, up. Like, are you going to be gun, shooting your pants I'm like, for the live audience? <laughs> I'm like, I could just do a gunfight again. That might be, <laughs> but oh, maybe no, less an audience. Yeah, no, I like, just send me back over the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go get shot at real quick. <laughs> but it was, uh, it still is one of those things. You played in front of live. Live is such a different, and it's it weird because we get. Fucking like a million views on a video, 500,000 sure. views on a video. And then you're like, eh, whatever. 400, 500 people, big deal, right? But no, nah, it's just like, yeah, it's so different when you're in the same room with people. It's I think so you're going to love it. As nervous as you might be, like the the adrenaline rush you get after doing something in front of an audience that is obviously there. They paid money to see you because they know you, they love you guys. Like you're not going to get some random casual listener that listened to one podcast, come to a live show. That's the beautiful part is, you know, the people that are there love you guys. They listen to you guys and the energy from that is going to be, is going to be palpable and it's going to be sweet. And the, the feeling you're going to get when at the end of the show and you, I, you'll probably be doing like some meet and greet, whatever the fuck, it's going to be awesome. Yep. I'm excited for you. It's going to be so yep. fun. Thank you. We're super excited. And it was that, um, WME, thankfully they're the ones that pushed it. They were like, Hey, yep. you should try it. And they let that thing happen. And then they, I will big shout out to Ben and that team because they did everything we we just had to push the dates they covered down right. on every it, aspect of that's it. what i imagine that's a, a company that kind of deals with doing these live performances with people that have audiences and they take care of all the logistical side of things and it's like hey just show up are they gonna do like all the audio video and get all that shit set up as well everything yeah. Dude, so you just roll stars. in with a fucking a little a little backpack full of high noons and you're good to go <laughs> yeah we just <laughs> get, get those drinks ready and then what a gig bro what a gig send in front of 400 500 people each show damn. and we're like oh damn it this is gonna be I excited <laughs> and yeah, then we so have like, an amazing guests too yeah i i'm excited to watch them so this will be out you'll probably be done with two or three of them and then this will come out and then you'll last show and then i'll be coming down probably the following week to Hopefully, be on a, a an episode, not a, a, a traditional episode, and then shoot some guns at the range with you. Dude, we are super excited for all of that, all yeah. of it, bro. And Dude, then we're I'm- gonna do a, a little. Uh, we're we're also doing some vloggy stuff for BTS for Unsub now, so okay. you'll be part of that. And that's gonna be like. We have a, actually, we just, uh, another dude just moved down and he's actually going to be part of the BTS. So we have like a whole team getting built, but the BTS stuff you got, I'm excited because we'll do like, okay, hey, Leon's on this episode. Also, here is the day with Leon. We went and did skydiving or like the, uh, the tunnel time. We went and ate, we did some drinks, we did racing, whatever it is we do that day. Yeah. Shotguns. And that lives on the BTS side. That's it's such a sweet play. Cause I think that, I, I, I and just full disclosure, like in thinking in the future for me, like I envy so much what you've done with having guests and bringing them down for the experience of the podcast. And there's a guy, um, you probably know who he is. Um, I'm literally, I have dementia, so I can't think of it now, but he, uh, <clears throat> he has a podcast as well. He's big into the bow hunting space and he does a, he has a show on oh. YouTube. Um, oh uh, my God. Cameron Haynes. Cameron Haynes. Thank you. Yeah. You obviously know Cameron Haynes. So love, Love that idea of what he does. He brings people out. They they work out. They go do some bow shit. And then, you know, he gives these people the experience of a day in his life. And it's all just filmed beautifully. And then they eventually sit down and do a podcast. Like, that type of content really speaks to me. As a 38 going on 39-year-old, I... I hope that over the course of the next 3, 5, 10 years, I can transition into a space where I'm doing content that's bringing people in, building community, sharing the things that I love with other people. And when you talked about doing the BTS stuff with Unsub, that's what I think about. Like, sorry, you have the podcast and now you're, you're bringing people in and getting this other element, which is like the in real life, we're going to do these things, whatever that is. And obviously there's the range day, which is already part of that. 
just unbelievable. So, you know, I, I feel like I live up in the Boston area, as you know, and like my, so much of my heart is like, is Make with what you guys do in Texas. <laughs> I know. Right. If I didn't have so many obligations and family up here, like, so I've gotten to the point where I'm like, if I can't move right now, at least maybe I can try to build some sort of community up here that kind of shares these same values. And that's, that's where my head's out now, or which I, me, where my head's at. Also so, just big shout out to you. Cause if people out there, the hardest thing to do as a content creator is not be surrounded by other content creators or yes. in the same space. Cause it doing it by yourself is it sounds easy. It makes it so much harder when you just can't bounce ideas mm. or just be around those guys. Cause that is the most motivating dude. When I've talked, when we talk on the phone, when we have our like one hour phone calls, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's, I just motivated. I get so <laughs> amped like, up, dude. I hang dude. up the phone and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, I'm about to take the world over right now. It's <laughs> fucking so sick. motivated. Yeah. And then I'm coming off the, like a three week stretch of just sitting in my office alone. And I'm like, <laughs> I need to move to Texas. <laughs> now <laughs> yeah god damn sweetheart pack your bags tell jackson he's getting out of school for a couple weeks <laughs> Woo, let's do this thing <laughs> oh man no but that's exciting i can't wait to see some of that bts content listen la last thing i want to ask you three five ten years you, you have uh, uh had incredible success with unsub that's going to continue what's outside of the podcasting even outside of maybe the content space right outside of the content space what what do you have a little fire in your loins about right now? Anything specific? Like, what's your non-content? I'm unwinding. This is what I want to be doing right now. Oh, is it building business or is it like a TV show or something? Because <laughs> I'm like, which one? Because I have like my other, we have three businesses about one just launched and we have two more. We're uh, working in, I think I talked to you about the, yeah. the video game one where yeah. we're bringing the guys on for that super excited for that endeavor with the vr space and like firearm training and then uh the big one which is uh well this is coming out then we'll have our soft launch around that time we'll just say mm. an app for others mm -hmm. and i'll try to see, like around there we're, we're TBD. about to soft there'll be yeah, more there'll be more TBD. coming out in the future TBD. about that and it is just those always just throw in Throwing those coals in different fires and then yep. watching them become successful or hoping they will. But when you have a good team behind it, yep. it's that. And then just make more time for the family. Like, really, it's that balance. It's a hard balance because we don't, we work seven days a week. And you know that. 100%. And I, you know what? I said last question and I lied because I forgot to ask you this because this is something I think about a lot. Do you, like, finding... The balance when you do jobs like we do where you could work 24 hours a day and it, there's it, a lot of what you get is directly predicated by how much effort you're putting in, right? And it becomes – you have to really be intentional with making time for the people in your life that matter because it's so easy just to get wrapped up in the businesses and trying to you know keep all the gears turning. Do you have anything in particular you do, or is there like a time of day that you allot uh, for, you know, your son and, and, and the lady or what, H how do you balance running several businesses that are successful in this lifestyle? And, and I say, like, I ask, how do you balance or how do you, what, how do you struggle with it? Cause I know for me, I tried, but it is a struggle. Like, what does that look like for you? It's the same. It's a struggle. It yeah. is. Thankfully, Savannah is an amazing, amazing woman. And Love she it. works off my brain where I'm like, Hey baby, I just need you to set these days and tell me specific times so I can just block out that those time frames, and yeah. then we'll do it. And then evenings doing a lot better now where it's like, Hey, with bedtime, we'll, we'll spend uh, time with the kiddo and okay. We're allocating like a couple hours when they get home or whatever. And then it's like, or some days it's gonna, Hey, dad's busy. Like dad's going to be really busy, yeah. but I'll put you down. I'm going to, I'll re read your book and then I'm going right back into work and I might not be in bed till midnight, 1 AM. But then it's like, wake up, rinse, repeat, spend that time in the morning. But past that, it's Sav will just set schedule. She'd be like, Hey babe, what about this day at this time? Can we just like, it's just us that evening. And then breaking, I've been, it, one of it's so nice usually sundays as you can tell today i've done two podcasts <laughs> and two business meetings <laughs> so not today usually it's tried today it is just relax the phone yep. goes off yep 
we turned the phone off for 12 hours. Love it. And I just reset because that is this thing is it just goes off constantly. I know you feel it. It mm -hmm. is like a weight. You're like, I don't want to see the text messages. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, and Sundays for me as well are sacred. And I was I was just telling I was tell, telling Jordan here before this that um, to, I, I always make an effort to not work on Sundays. And but I'm like, when it but when it's necessary, like and you, you do it like and that's what it is. And that's, you know. Shout out to the, to the ladies in our life. I mean, you, if you do this type of thing, you need a woman who's understanding and is in your corner. But I think in speaking from my experience and what I, I see from you, like you're as long as you're making that effort, like you have to be adaptable because things are moving around at all times. So like you're going to try to do the Sundays, you're going to do that, but there's going to be a time where all of a sudden I have five things I have to do. I'm sorry, but, but you're, you're never not trying your best to make time for the people that matter. And that's the key. And that's the key. About. So what a fucking sweet man. I had such a good time talking to you. Eli double tap, Mr. Quavo, an absolute honor to have you on decently and decent. I really appreciate you giving me the time and I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks. And uh, man, fucking cheers to the future, my friend. Cheers to the future. Truly a pleasure. Thanks for having me on brother. Thank you for your time and just a magnificent conversation salute salum